If there's one thing that people love to go on about more than anything else, it is what is the best game ever made? I mean, it's a redundant question because we all know the answer. The answer is Gears of War. I mean, it's got a muscly dude in it who walks around with a giant chainsaw. See? But the trap a lot of individuals fall into when they're picking their games is that these games are rubbish. Grand Theft Auto, Bioshock, Portal. Don't be a mindless sheep that follows the crown to Loserville. Be your own human. Stand on your own two feet and see the world for what it really is. That's why today I'm gonna pull back the curtain and reveal the real best eight games ever made. Embrace yourself, cause you're about to be struck with a truth grenade of truth. I, I use truth twice in the same sentence. Number eight, Aliens Colonial Marines. Yeah, that's right, you heard me. Your ears haven't cheated on you. What does that even mean? What is wrong with your brain? You hear a noise, it goes through your lobes, and then you process that information, and yes, by and large, whatever you heard is what I said. Keep up with me. But seriously, everyone moans about Aliens Colonial Marines, saying it was nothing more than a lie wrapped up in deceit, and that the game itself was worse than Shaq Fu. Which can't be true, because Shaquille O'Neal is in that game, and if Shaquille O'Neal is in a video game, can't be bad. Here's the thing though, it's a well-known fact that you love hating on Randy Pitchford. I mean, you really do love hating on him, and to prove that fact, here's some quotes I found on the internet about Randy Pitchford, not said by me, but said by you. Smug lying fucker. The kind of friend that you can't trust because eventually, he will screw you over. Lying, slimy, scumbag. Okay then, you know what I mean? Yeah, look at that face. When you see that grin, you just want to clench your fist and ram it into his plumpy cheeks. But given the world we live in, you can't do that. You can, but you're gonna jail, because you know, it's not legal or illegal. But that doesn't mean you can't hate him or at the very least hold him in contempt. But if you're doing all that with no real reason, you become the asshole. You need something to spear all this forward so it's justified. And that's why you should love Aliens Colonial Marines. That's your catalyst right there. Randy Boy just making up that his team were working on it is the reason you're allowed to think this man is a schlub. He did a schlubbly thing and he deserves to be put on the schlub list. And that's all because of one game, Aliens Colonial Marines. And that's why it's one of the best games ever made and you can try and argue that but you're wrong and randy pitchford will be the first person to tell you that to your face number seven half-life three you know what makes me laugh every day there are still some idiots out there who get up and believe that half-life three may actually be announced what is wrong with you what are you waiting for and how long do you have to wait before you realize you're living in a world of nonsense? You're wasting your life away. You're gonna be on your deathbed and still reaching for facts about why Half-Life 3 is gonna come out because you saw the number three on an orange background in London and then Gabe Newell is gonna pop up from nowhere, punch you in your nose and laugh in your face. Because in this scenario, Gabe Newell is a sociopath, but still you'll die and you still won't have Half-Life 3. The point being, I love Half-Life 3 because something that's not even real winds nerds up on a daily basis. Not even I have that kind of turnaround, but a fake game that is about as real as Christmas Man is able to make people mad by not existing. That's amazing. Huh? Yes, you do. You know who that is. Christmas Man, the fat guy who flies around on Christmas Eve before breaking into your house and leaving crap all over the floor that you've got to tidy up. No, his name is not Father Christmas. That's weird, he's not your dad. And no, Santa Claus, Santa Claus is a famous Mexican guitarist. It blows my mind that a thing that never even happened can actually reduce a grown man and woman to tears. But damn it, it warms my bones that it does. So never release it, Valve, and if you do, you'll be off this list quicker than you can say, episodic content. Number six, Limbo of the Lost. You probably don't remember Limbo of the Lost. Aside from having a dumb name, it was just your standard point and click adventure with box art that had been drawn by a child. Look at that. I've seen better drawings come out my ass. 
which admittedly is very strange. So, why, I hear you ask, is this game in a best games ever list? And the answer is simple. It teaches you the stealing is wrong. On 11th of June 2008, mere days after its North American release, Game Plasma, which also has a name that sounds like everyone involved just gave up after five minutes of brainstorming, realized that certain places in Limbo of the Lost were identical to the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. And the reason they did realize this is because they were actually from the Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. This started a domino effect that also showed developer Majestic Studios had just nicked assets from World of Warcraft, Sea Dogs, Beetlejuice, and one of the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. So in short, they just lifted things from other things because they couldn't be bothered to do it themselves, like DJs. However, you want to know what happened after all of this? The game was pulled from distribution and those in charge were punished with the crimes they had committed. And what a lesson. What a bunch of teachings to take away with you after playing a stupid video game. I mean, what else do you ever learn from a video game? What does Tetris teach you? If blocks start falling from the sky, make sure to assemble them in the correct position and be warned, because eventually they'll start getting faster. What a pile of shit. Number five, Duke Nukem Forever. If you're one of these idiots that plays a game and then judges it solely on the experience you had, I hate you. You ever heard about context? Of course you haven't. Or how about looking deeper beneath the surface to see what something is actually trying to say? Well, you wouldn't know anything about that because you're shallower than a kid's paddling pool. This is why it's unfair that Duke Nukem Forever constantly gets shat upon like some unfortunate so-and-so walking along the street before a bird decides to just let loose. Weird that as well, isn't it? You're just walking along and then a creature, a living thing just thinks to itself, I'm gonna go now and you're gonna be my toilet. That's just the thing, happens every day and if it does happen to you, you just gotta accept it. Madness. If you actually took a step back and look at the bigger picture mind, you'd realize that Duke Nukem Forever was an amazing analogy for life. No matter what struggles you face, no matter how bad things get, no matter how many people leave you behind, never give up, ever. And if you stay true to your original vision, you will make it eventually. What a lovely sentiment to even think about, let alone perpetuate in a nonsense video game. Most games just want you to listen to sad piano as some silhouetted kid runs around a forest. And there you are saying, where? The gameplay is bad. Well, you know what? I think you're bad. And I give you one out of 10. Your replayability is a pile of wank. Number four, Call of Duty World at War. Call of Duty World at War, or COD War, which sounds like a human being trying to talk as they have their gum sewn together, is not only one of the best Call of Duties ever made, but it's one of the best games in history. Why? Check this. Miller. And this. And this. And this. It's well violent. Awesome. Number three, Star Trek 2013. Picture the scene. Years after being relevant, some walrus in a suit decides it's time to bring back Star Trek. And the way he's going to do this is by getting geeks so excited that they even vow to miss Dungeons and Dragons night if the two release dates happen to clash. And in case you're unaware, that is huge. That's like the Pope not going to mass. Like Kanye West not saying something stupid. Like Bioware remembering how to make a good video game. As is usually the way, this also meant a game had to be tied into the whole thing, mostly because studio bigwigs knew that Star Trek fans were a bunch of schmucks who would buy anything as long as it had the Enterprise logo on it. And good grief, that makes me want to end my own existence. Get this though, the game itself was f***ing terrible, and man, I mean it was so bad. It was like you made it, and that's not a compliment. This, of course, caused Poindexter's the world over to break down and cry, and any game that can do that is alright by me. Should have been on the box that. It's so bad, it will make a nerd sob. I would have bought nine copies. It had life after release too, because these pillocks don't have to pretend it wasn't worse than having a rod shoved up your ass and defend it on the internet. Can you imagine if we were all living in 1567? You wouldn't be on the internet 
defending some stupid game, you'd be defending the realm. You'd take your trusty sword and your loyal steed and you would have gone into battle. You don't know you're born, you lot. Well, obviously you do. You don't wake up every day and think that you're dead. You know that you're alive. It's just a turn of phrase. Stop picking at me. Moving on. Number two, E.T. If we turn back the clock to the 80s and 90s, the game magazine ruled the world. Selling so many copies, it makes me want to throw up in my own mouth. The review was considered gold, and the review was one of the most important things on the planet. For some reason, though, the majority of these were broken down thusly. As well as a score at the end, you would be given numbers that told you how good graphics, sound, gameplay, multiplayer, and of course, longevity were. The reason for this last one was simple. If you were stupid enough to actually go out and buy a video game, these things were expensive. So the last thing you needed to do was drop 50 pounds and then realize after a few hours, ah eh, shit, I've already finished it. Well, no. The last thing you need is to stop buying so many Marvel comics, but there's about as much chance of that happening as there is of North Korea giving up its nuclear program. What I will say though, is stop buying comics, you plonker. Superman isn't real, and neither are your chances of getting laid. That was a bit much. That was a bit much. When we bring E.T. into the equation, though, nothing even comes close when we're talking about longevity. E.T. came out in 1982, and people still talk about it today. And they talk about it a lot. Sure, a lot of that is to throw shade all over it. And for some reason, to go out into the desert to dig a load of copies up that have been buried, which is a bigger waste of time than League of Legends. But that's 35 years of attention for one game. What else commands so much of your time that it goes that long? Aside from the nonsense that is Half-Life 3, and what you do with your hand at night when the lights are down and your parents have gone to bed. But E.T. beats all that, hands down. Number one, any flight simulator game. Because they're so f boring, they act as the perfect sleep aid. You just sit down and look at a fake aeroplane window for 12 hours. Forget Night Owl, just stick on Microsoft Simulator X and within a few minutes you'll be zonked out and you can't put a price on that and therefore any flight simulator game is the best game ever made because you will have a wonderful night's sleep as it takes you on the pathway to Napsville. Now make sure you do what's right for the human race. Like the video, subscribe to PC Games N, and then leave a comment below.